up beautiful people? We are back in Tbilisi this morning and up quite early because today we're heading out on a little bit of a day trip to a place called Gori and from there we're going to visit one of the cave towns here in Georgia called Uplistica. Hello! 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 We really love pools. Oh no, our friend is waiting for us. And we have food now. <laughs> oh, I really want to give it food. We're not doing like an organized group tour thing. It's way cheaper if we just get public transport there. So we're working all of that out today. It might take a little bit longer, but definitely worth saving the money. In this one? Yes, sir. <laughs> Could be a while till we go. On the Mashrutka with uh, no one else on it, so could be a while till it fills up and goes. Just got a massive piece of bread for lunch and arranged a taxi for 15 lari, which is like four pounds to get there. Apparently, thank you, my lover. Apparently there's a, uh, there is a minivan that goes up there, but it stops like a kilometer away or something. And we had to wait quite a while for that mushrutka, like an hour back in Tbilisi, just waiting on it to go. So we kind of want to get there a little bit quicker. This is still warm and cost 70 tetri, which is 20 pence. So this town that we've just arrived in is called Gori, and it's famous for being the birthplace of Stalin. There's a museum here and lots of different things, I think, but we decided that the main thing we wanted to do first was go to Oblisike, the cave town, and then after that we can come back to Gori and see if we can find some other things to do. Ah, Madloga. So that was seven lari each to come in for an adult, so that's two pounds each, and then we paid 25 lari for a guide between us, so total just over 10 pounds for entry for both of us and the guide, which we thought was a good idea because we might as well find out exactly what we're seeing and learn some more about it. So this is our guide, we met Kate. Hello. <laughs> she is going to be showing us around Uplistika today. Uplistika. Upalisgad and Atsike 
is castle in Georgian translation? Oh, so Uplis, Uplis is God. Castle of God. <laughs> castle. Castle of God. Castle of God. Castle of God. It was a temple city in the first century before Christ, about 2400 years ago. 2400 yeah, years ago? Yeah, it was a temple city. Mm -hmm. People who lived there was a pagan. Pretty old. This was a uh, traditional bread oven. We are oh, people this bake one. bread. Yeah, we had clay all around. On the bottom part, it was made. When it's this clay wall, we are heating people bake bread. Wow. Bake bread. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They had different kind of food color and wheat meat. They kept for the year. So this was cold enough to be a fridge? Yes. Just Let's see it. We kept it there. Oh, it's a lot cooler in here. But can you see a uh, piece of fire, the color? Yes. Yeah, I told you about oh, the uh, 18th century, supposedly it became shelter for shepherds. When shepherds were coming in the caves, they were on the fire. They were like horses here. For the time, oh, horses. Yeah. Holes here, just like a tie the horse. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So this ahead of us is the theatre, this would have been the stage, and just through here is the backstage. And just behind What's left of the seating, you can see like one, two floors, and there would have been a lot more, but there was an earthquake around 1920 here, which has destroyed a lot of the, a lot of the town that's sort of outside of the caves. But this would have been where the seating was in kind of like an amphitheatre style. Now we just have a good view. So this river that runs along here, that starts in Turkey and it's called the Mutkvari River, I think she was saying. That's the same river that we saw when we were in Mosqueta, just like last week. This was the main street from here. This was the main street? Yeah, I think it's the civil system. there's like a whole temple complex here and this would have been a reservoir the further up we go this is where the sort of richer people would live and down below would have been where the poorer people were this is a prison yeah this one people could only stand not sit because on the bottom here is narrow like this oh okay yeah, people could only stand not sit the low case on the main street it was the main street right yeah. uh, it would be a good example for other person for other people not waiting the crime Because Uplistike, Uplistike, Uplistike is so old, it's had so many different uses, so many different religions. Over a thousand years ago, it was pagan here. I think she said until the fourth to the sixth centuries. And this down here would have been where they sacrificed different animals. And then up here, originally, would have been some sort of pagan temple, but instead now, there is a church that's been built here. This, this has been rebuilt. So that is from the 18th century, but it was originally built in the 10th century, they think. And even more interestingly, it has no foundations. That is just built 
straight onto the rock. Ooh, off he pops. Oh, I love the way they move. Oh, he's gone. We said goodbye to the guide. She could only stay with us for a little bit and show us kind of the lower areas. But we've walked up quite a bit further and you can see most people are all kind of at this level down here. But up here, you get a really nice view of all of the surrounding area. You can literally see the way that they would have hit it, see? That's where your hand falls. quietest bit of the whole place. It was actually a little busier than I expected, but probably should have thought it would be, with it being one of the main day trips from Tbilisi. Very nice little excursion. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Look at that landscape. Looks pretty epic. Just walking to the nearest village, it's like 15 minutes away. That way we don't have to get a taxi back down and we're not in any rush, so we figured we'd go and try and get the public transport again. And pretty glad because it means we get to take in this amazing sandstone scenery just right next to us. There's like caves all inside here. That close to it. I'm not, it just looks really cute. Come on, Jova. Didi Thank you very much. Ah, your English is great. Ah, yes. <laughs> Better than my Georgian. <laughs> this lovely lady just told us that the uh, mashrutka was on its way. So, on we get. Just walking down through Stalin Park here in Gori because of course it was where he was born. And now we're trying to find our way to the Stalin Museum to see what that is like. Hello. This little tag here. Those tags mean there's like a charity organization thing that goes around and gives dogs their shots and things like that. And then they get the tag in their ear you know they're pretty safe and normally they're pretty friendly. Look at this one. Ah, hello, hello. Ah, <laughs> loves it. So nice. Look. Ah. One of my favourite things about all of Georgia is just the amount of friendly, lovely dogs here. Oh, you really Look at it! <laughs> you love it! Oh, you're really sweet. And this is the museum. Pretty grand. And literally right next to it, just over here, the communist blocks. So, a pretty stark contrast. Especially as this was opened, I think just four years. I think it was opened in 57 and Stalin died in 53, so it was just four years after he died. And then I think it was closed again in 1989. And then obviously, well maybe, things have changed and then it's been reopened. But it'll be interesting to go and have a little look inside. Opulent architecture. A white marble statue of Stalin. Definitely 
paints an interesting picture. Oh. Wow. So we've actually ended up, we just walked in, went upstairs to the bit where you didn't need a ticket and we've actually left and decided that we don't want to really go in it. It seems very much like a very positive interpretation of stuff. Mm. It felt a bit like it was a glorification of Stalin's life. So. We were unsure of whether we actually wanted to pay to go in and support it. And then we came down and we saw that there was a souvenir shop with t-shirts and bottles and framed pictures of Stalin and... I don't know, it just didn't... didn't quite... Didn't sit right. Yeah. So, we ended up not paying to go in there. Instead, we've walked back out into the Stalin Park again. The more you give to something like that, the more it kind of reinforces this idea that this is a, this should be a popular tourist attraction. And like that museum was reopened for tourists. Like it was closed in 1989 because of anti-Stalin and anti-Russia slash communism beliefs and the fact that it was reopened for purpose of the tourists and then it being more busy and it being like a focal point of Georgia kind of feels contradictory. Like is this something you want to support or not? Imagine if you walked into someone's house and there was that framed photo of Stalin or if someone was walking around with one of those Stalin bottle. It just... Hello. You recognise us, didn't you? This is more what we're about. The gory fortress up ahead of us, so we thought we'd go and climb that and have a little view over the town. And our little doggy friend has come and found us. Or maybe we found him, who knows. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, the mountains look incredible. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yes you are. Yes you are. Look at this one. Just doesn't have. Oh, look, they're all missing body parts. All missing their arms. That one's missing his face. Perhaps some sort of memorial or something for soldiers, it seems. <laughs> Bye, Georgi. Bye. Focus, focus. Yeah. Okay. Very good day. And also, some good Indian food. Really good Indian food. Good Indian food at India Palace, I think it was called here, in Tbilisi. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this one up here. Thank you so much for watching. Big love. It feels good around here. Disgusting. And I thought the entire whole raw chicken was ice cream at first.